Welcome back. For our next core component, let's take a look at the button component in React Native. The button component allows users to trigger actions, similar to the button component in the web. But what you should know though, is that the button component has platform specific rendering for iOS and Android. To understand this better, let's switch to VS Code and go through an example. First, we need to import the button component from React Native. Inside the view component, I'll invoke the button component. Unlike the HTML button element, the button component in React Native is a self-closing tag. There is no inner text or the closing tag for the React Native button component. To specify the button text, we use a prop called title. Let's set it to press. If we save the file and take a look at the devices now, we can see the button component. It is rendered with iOS styles on iPhone 14 Pro and Android styles on the Android virtual device. We can of course create our own custom buttons that have the same styles in both the platforms, but that is for a video later in the series. Now, let's go back to VS Code and handle the press event on this button. In web development with React, we listen to the onClick event using the onClick prop. Similarly, in React Native, the button component provides an onPress prop. Let's add onPress equal to an arrow function, and we simply log to the console, button pressed. When we press the button, the event handler is triggered and we see the log message in the terminal, button pressed. Click on the Android button and once again, we have the log statement. The event handler is pretty basic, but for more complex logic, you can define a separate function and assign it to the onPress event. So that covers the title and on press props. The third prop I would like to highlight in this video is the color prop, which allows easy customization of the button color. Let's set color is equal to midnight blue. Now, if we take a look at the UI, we can see the button with the new color applied. Lastly, there is the disabled prop mainly used in form handling. By adding the disable prop, we set it to true by default. In the UI, we can see the button styled as disabled, and if I press the button, it won't trigger any press events. Consequently, we won't see any new logs in the console. Usually, it is better to manage a state variable to control the disabled prop value instead of directly assigning true or false, as I have done here. In summary, the button component is used to trigger actions on press. You can specify the title prop for the button text, the on press prop to handle the press event, the color prop to set the color, and the disabled prop to disable the button. In the next video, let's take a look at another component to handle the press event. I'll see you in the next one.